I think it's endearing for people to see us mess up. <laughs> we mess up every night, whether you notice it or not. <laughs> every night. Every night there's something that's wrong. And that's kind of cool because it still provides the thrill of like, something's on the line, like you're always trying to achieve something. There's not perfection in a bottle on a track behind us. It would suck if like there was all this insane production that we couldn't do live. And there is some of that on this record. I feel like probably next time we record, we'll probably keep it even simpler because yeah. I really like just being able to be self-sufficient in a mm -hmm. live setting. It really sat for like nine months or something and then I remember you calling me and being like, hey, do you have that demo still? And I sent it to you. I was at my parents' house in Texas and, and I was like, yeah. I sent it to Tony and it was like this kind of half-baked thing and like within days, Tony sent it back and it was like, you know, way more formed and I was like, yeah, that's, that's a, 
hot track. I was very excited about doing that one. I, I kind of knew that it was going to be a, a priority song. You know, in terms of those layers on the track, didn't think too hard about it. Like Jay was like, Tony, come over here, plug into this. And I didn't know what he was doing. And he was like, play that thing you play in the beginning of the song. And I did, but I messed up and I hit this like wrong open string and he reversed it and that's what's in the song. Like yeah. me messing up and hitting the wrong note is like it played backwards in the song. It's like, and it's in the song and you hear it like four times. <laughs> I was like, let me do it again. And he was like, no, it's perfect. It is kind of <laughs> sick though. If I want to make music, I got to do it with uh, a band and yeah, it's the only way I know how. It's the only way I've ever done it. And I don't, I don't want to like sit here and act like the way that we do it is better because that's how they did it in the 70s. <laughs> like, I think it's fine for anyone to be creating however they're creating as long as they're creating. Yeah, like Tony says, any way that you're creating is, is great, but this just happened to be the way for us, and I think it's... It's been fun to hold to it, so yeah. Fuck it, we're gonna keep doing it. Okay, so it's a fictional story, it's not true, about dating or just get, getting into this relationship with an older woman. She's a widow, her husband has passed away, but he's left behind um, a really well-maintained sports car, specifically a Corvette from the 60s. And if you date this woman, you get to ride around in the car. And of course you love her for other reasons. Sure, she's uh, got a great personality, <laughs> primarily. But yeah, it's totally fake. It's a short story. It never happened. 
and mm. live off of one F. Live right. off of one F. The right. highway exit one F. Well, okay, so White Reaper was Nick and I. We were in college for like a month before we dropped out, um, and we came home to record like our first demo. So there was Halloween Express or Spirit or whatever in town, and we were, you know, chumming around in there. And there was like a little, like, you hang it on a tree, and it was like this Reaper guy, and on the like barcode. It said White Reaper, and we were like, oh, it kind of sounds like Black Sabbath or something, but it's like White Reaper. And, you know, do we regret it? Of course, but here we are. It's too late, it's too late now. It's too late for us. <laughs> we've tried, we've tried, to, we've asked for permission. No one will give it to us. Did we expect the success? No. If we did, we probably would have chose a better name. I think we should quit. We should break up. (laughs) 